Parents Music Resource Center. In today's video we'll learn about Parents Music Resource Center. Going through the sections. Abstract, Actions, The Filthy 15, Senate Hearing, Parental Advisory Sticker, Musician Reaction, External Links, Abstract. The Parents Music Resource Center, PMRC was an American committee formed in 1985 with the stated goal of increasing parental control over the access of children to music deemed to a violent, drug-related or sexual themes via labeling albums with parental advisory stickers. The committee was founded by four women known as the Washington Wives a reference to their husbands' connections with government in the Washington, D.C. area. The women who founded the PMRC are Tipper Gore, wife of Senator and later Vice President Al Gore, Susan Baker, Wife of Treasury Secretary James Baker, Pam Hauer, wife of Washington Realtor Raymond Hauer, and Sally Nevius, wife of former Washington City Council Chairman John Nevius. The PMRC eventually grew to include 22 participants before shutting down in the mid to late 1990s. This project compresses information gathered from Wikipedia in video format. Why should I watch it? Studies prove that reading while listening improves comprehension, increases speed as well as expands vocabulary and enhances fluency. Provide your feedback on the comments section. Support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. Thanks. Actions As a method of combating this alleged problem, the PMRC suggested a voluntary move by the RIAA and the music industry to develop music labeling in the form of a rating system similar to the film rating system developed by the Motion Picture Association of America. Additional suggestions from the PMRC that appeared in an article in the Washington Post included, printing warnings and lyrics on album covers, forcing record stores to put albums with explicit covers under the counters, pressuring television stations not to broadcast explicit songs or videos, reassess the contracts of musicians who perform violently or sexually in concert, and creating a panel to set industry standards. The Filthy 15 One of the actions taken by the PMRC was compiling a list of 15 songs in popular music, at the time, that they found the most objectionable. This list is known as the Filthy 15 and consists of the following songs along with the lyrical content category for which each song was considered objectionable. Senate Hearing In August 1985, 19 record companies agreed to put parental guidance, explicit lyrics labels on albums to warn consumers of explicit lyrical content. Before the labels could be put into place, the Senate agreed to hold a hearing on so-called porn rock. The hearing was held on September 19, 1985, when representatives from the PMRC, three musicians D. Snyder, Frank Zappa, John Denver, and Senators Paula Hawkins, Al Gore, and others testified before the Senate Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee on the subject of the content of certain sound recordings and suggestions that recording packages be labeled to provide a warning to prospective purchasers of sexually explicit or other potentially offensive content. Paula Hawkins presented three record covers and the music videos for Hot for Teacher by Van Halen, and We're Not Gonna Take It by Twisted Sister, commenting, Much has changed since Elvis' seemingly innocent times. Subtleties, suggestions, and innuendo have given way to overt expressions and descriptions of often violent sexual acts, drug taking, and flirtations with the occult. The record album covers to me are self explanatory. Susan Baker testified that there certainly are many causes for these ills in our society, but it is our contention that the pervasive messages aimed at children which promote and glorify suicide, rape, sadomasochism, and so on, have to be numbered among the contributing factors. Tipper Gore asked record companies to voluntarily plot a warning label on music products inappropriate for younger children due to explicit sexual or violent lyrics. National PTA Vice President for Legislative Activity Millie Waterman related the PTA's role in the debate, and proposed printing the symbol R on the cover of recordings containing explicit sexual language, violence, profanity, the occult and glorification of drugs and alcohol, and providing lyrics for R labeled albums. In addition, Dr. Joe Stussy, a music professor at the University of Texas at San Antonio, spoke regarding the power of music to influence behavior. He argued that heavy metal was different from earlier forms of music such as jazz and rock and roll because it was church music and had as one of its central elements the element of hatred. Dr. Paul King, a child and adolescent psychiatrist, testified on the deification of heavy metal musicians, and to the presentation of heavy metal as a religion.
He also stated that many adolescents read deeply into song lyrics. During his statement, musician and producer Frank Zappa asserted that the PMRC proposal is an ill-conceived piece of nonsense which fails to deliver any real benefits to children, infringes the civil liberties of people who are not children, and promises to keep the courts busy for years dealing with the interpretation and enforcement problems inherent in the proposal's design. He went on to state his suspicion that the hearings were a front for H.R. 2911, a proposed blank tape tax. The major record labels need to have H.R. 2911 whiz through a few committees before anybody smells the rat. One of them is chaired by Senator Thurmond. Is it a coincidence that Mrs. Thurmond is affiliated with the PMRC? Zappa had earlier stated about the Senate's agreement to hold a hearing on the matter that a couple of blowjobs here and there and bingo. You get a hearing. Folk rock musician John Denver referred to the proposed labels as censorship and stated he was strongly opposed to censorship of any kind in our society or anywhere else in the world, and that in his experience censors often misinterpret music, as was the case with his song Rocky Mountain High. He further compared the PMRC proposals to Nazi book burnings, and expressed his belief that censorship is ultimately counterproductive, that which is denied becomes that which is most desired, and that which is hidden becomes that which is most interesting. Consequently, a great deal of time and energy is spent trying to get at what is being kept from you. When Denver came up to give his speech, many expected him to side with the PMRC. D. Snyder, frontman and lead singer of the heavy metal band Twisted Sister, testified that he not support Gordikov's unnecessary and unfortunate decision to agree to a so-called generic label on some selected records. Like John Denver, Snyder felt that his music had been misinterpreted. He defended the Twisted Sister songs under the blade, which had been interpreted by the PMRC as referring to sadomasochism, bondage, and rape, and we're not gonna take it, which the PMRC accused of promoting violence. Snyder told the panel that Under the Blade was inspired by a band member's surgery and was about the fear he imagined one would experience undergoing surgery, announcing that the only sadomasochism, bondage, and rape in this song is in the mind of Ms. Gore. He further stated Ms. Gore was looking for sadomasochism and bondage, and she found it. Someone looking for surgical references would have found it as well. Snyder concluded that the full responsibility for defending my children falls on the shoulders of my wife and I because there is no one else capable of making these judgments for us. Notable snippets of audio from the hearing found their way into Zappa's audio collage Porn Wars, released on the Frank Zappa Meets the Mothers of Prevention album. Senators Gore, Hollings, Gordon, Hawkins, and others appeared. The album cover featured a parody of the RIAA warning label. The LP included a note to listeners to send to Zappa's Barking Pumpkin Records for a freezy pack a printed information package that included transcripts of the committee hearing, and a letter from Zappa encouraging young people to register to vote. Zappa's full testimonial was released on a posthumous 2010 compilation called Congress Shall Make No Law. Parental Advisory Sticker On November 1, 1985, before the hearing ended, the RIAA agreed to put parental advisory labels on selected releases at their own discretion. The labels were generic, unlike the original idea of a descriptive label categorizing the explicit lyrics. Many record stores refused to sell albums containing the label, most notably Walmart, and others limited sales of those albums to adults. One of the albums to receive the parental advisory sticker was Frank Zappa's Grammy-winning album Jazz from Hell, presumably for the use of the word hell in its title but also for the song G-Spot Tornado, even though it is a collection of instrumental pieces and contains no lyrics at all. It is uncertain whether the tipper sticker is effective in preventing children from being exposed to explicit content. Some, citing the forbidden fruit effect, suggest that the sticker in fact increases record sales. Philip Bailey of Earth, Wind and Fire said that for the most part might even sell more records in some areas, all you've got to do is tell somebody this is an oh no and then that's what they want to go see. Ice-T's track Freedom of Speech contains the lyrics, Hey, PMRC. You stupid fucking assholes slash the sticker on the record is what makes them sell gold dot slash can't you see, you alcoholic idiots slash the more you try to suppress us, the larger we get. While lyrics from the Furnace Face song We Love You, Tipper Gore, from their 1991 album Just Buy It, suggest that the label only whets my appetite, only makes us want to hear it that much more. Musician Reaction Many musicians have criticized or parodied the PMRC and Tipper Gore. Yo tip, what's the matter? You ain't getting no dick? You're bitchin' about rock and roll tats censorship, dumb bitch. 
The Constitution says we all got a right to speak. Say what we want, Tipper argument is weak. Our records have stickers with a warning from Tipper. Cause they're no good for kids, if we'd get her, we'd strip her. Tipper, won't you understand the message that I want to say? It's kind of rude but here it goes, it's fuck you. I don't like what you do, and I don't like you. Warning, the inside fold out to this record cover is a work of art by H.R. Giger that some people may find shocking, repulsive or offensive. Life can sometimes be that way out to burn the, flag, and replace it with a parental advisory sticker slash to spit liquor in the faces of this democracy of hypocrisy slash fuck you, Miss Cheney, fuck you, Tipper Gore.